Pre-wedding nerves are common. What's worse is the phantom of a madman stalking the streets of Staten Island in search of his next bride-to-be, not content until the young hopeful prenuptials are pre-empted. I'm that slasher guy, and tonight we're looking at Armand Mastriani's He Knows You're Alone. Our story opens, as you'd expect, with a young bride murdered on her wedding day. The killer escapes, and fast forward a few years and he's back on the prowl. This time his victims the patrons of a movie theater. In a clever opening scene lifted for the opening of Wes Craven and Kevin Williamson's Scream 2 17 years later, the killer offs his prey discreetly and slips away undetected once more. Except this time, he's sticking around, having taken fascination with university student Amy Jensen. Will Amy survive to see her wedding day through? Directed by Armand Mastriani, written by Scott Parker and starring Caitlin O'Heaney, Don Scardino, Elizabeth Kemp, and Tom Rolfing, He Knows You're Alone was released on August 29, 1980 and is considered one of the first slasher films out of the gate to capitalize on the boom of popularity had by the original Halloween, and its box office seconds that notion. Produced on a budget somewhere between $250,000 and $300,000, He Knows You're Alone grossed a respectable $4.9 million, proving that fans of John Carpenter's classic were indeed hungry for more. This film is interesting in that it is undeniable in that it is, to put it bluntly, a major Halloween ripoff. Everything down from the score to the killer's movements and certain plot beats are all more than a little reminiscent of Michael Myers' first outing. But He Knows You're Alone is so accomplished and crafted with such a deft hand that it's hard not to appreciate it in all the little things it does. Twists like the opening movie theater reveal make this one hard to ignore and the intelligence with which it's crafted all the more admirable. He Knows You're Alone is different than many other slashers of the era in that respect in that it's structured around an organizing principle, that being marriage. In something like Halloween or Friday the 13th, the date is entirely coincidental, but here the killer's pattern and motive hinges on weddings and wedding-specific locations. While I've made it known in previous reviews that I prefer my killers mask and mysterious, actor Tom Rolfing makes up for it by making his killer character vicious, unhinged, and seemingly anywhere and everywhere, making him really feel like a phantom, his eyes always on you from somewhere. Speaking of, his eyes in particular carry much of the menace, wild and fleeting as he clutches his weapon of choice. So often in slasher movies, villains serve only a means to an end. But even if you don't like anything else about it, at least the killer in He Knows You're Alone feels truly deranged. Throw in a chilly looking Staten Island, a very young Tom Hanks in his first acting role as far as I can tell, and you've got the recipe for quite a solid, if not really exceptional little horror film. On the downside, the pacing can occasionally dip in parts. In certain scenes I found myself glued to the screen as the tension built, and other times I was wondering exactly how much time I had left in the runtime. The Marvin character isn't even bordering on obnoxious, he just is obnoxious. For as much as I enjoy most other aspects of the film, spending the length of time with Marvin that we do was the occasional test of patience. If I have to hear him whinge on about his shirt one more time, or lean in for an ill-timed kiss, I think I might join Tom Rolfing's cause. While not as much of a drag, there is a minor element of what I like to call police procedural in this film as they try to track the killer down. If you're like me, namely in that police drama doesn't really tickle your fancy in the slightest, this is another element you find occasionally tiresome. As mentioned previously, this was the acting debut for Tom Hanks. His character, Elliot, was originally supposed to die in the script, but he proved so charismatic they decided to let him live. The entire filmmaking process, from writing the thing all the way through editing and final processing, was done in only four months. To continue off the last point, the film's shooting schedule was only 15 days over the winter, hence why it looks so darn cold in the movie. I'm unsure of the validity of this trivia entry, but I found it too weird not to include. According to the IMDb, 
Pat Benatar's Hell is for Children is commonly mistaken to be on this film's soundtrack for whatever reason. Though as I said, it's probably best to take this random bit of information with a grain or maybe even a dump truck's worth of salt. And now we make our way on to Best Moment Worst Moment, the semi award show whose grand prize is tickets to a cold ass looking state fair. Best Moment goes to the film's iconic opening. I know it may seem odd that I picked the very opening scene as the best, but it leaves such a strong impression and gives the film a solid foundation to start on. The moment that came close but deserves special mention is the amazing head in the fish tank gag. Inspired fun like this are what these movies are all about to me. Worst moment has to go to Marvin's sheer existence, but more specifically when he encounters Amy in the ice cream shop toward the beginning of the film. I don't know how else to say it, but he comes off like a total creep. Sure, Amy's actual boyfriend is an asshole, but Marvin rejecting Amy's invitation to her wedding but leaning in for a kiss anyways definitely wins him the Tool of the Year award. If you're interested in streaming or owning He Knows You're Alone, it's available in full on YouTube, but I'd recommend the excellent Blu-ray via Shout Factory. Until next time, and hey, don't be a Marvin, seriously. Thank <laughs> you.